Hello, this here is Mr. Security 702, and today we are going to discuss the basics of chemistry, my emphasis of study in college. First, let me define the field of chemistry because there seems to be a certain degree of confusion on the topic. As, al as always, there are going to be references in the deal with me, Bob. Chemistry is the study of atoms and molecules that make up matter and how those atoms and molecules interact with one another. This, of course, forces me to define the terms atom, molecule, and matter. Matter is anything that has mass and occupies space. Atoms are the base units of an element. Molecules are substances that are made up of two or more atoms. With these definitions in place, we see that everything that we deal with in our everyday world is made up of chemicals, including, but not limited to, each and every single one of us. Any object that you may grab occupies space because you are able to hold it. It has mass because when you put it on a scale, it brings up a weight of greater than zero. It is made up of atoms and molecules because that is the very nature of matter, to have atoms and molecules. With the above stated in, uh, definitions of molecules and atoms, we can logically deduce that if two samples have the exact same chemical composition, then these two substances are exactly the same chemically. If there is a very slight difference in chemical composition between two substances, then there may be a small change in chemical properties, or there may be a large difference between chemical properties. For example, we have two samples. One is H2O and the other is H2SO4. They are both clear liquids with the same viscosity. They both look exactly the same. The only physical difference is that H2SO4 weighs more. But I would highly suggest against you drinking H2SO4 because its more common name is sulfuric acid. Let us take another example. It would seem logical that H2O, H2, and O2 would have similar properties seeing as how, seeing as how H2O is made up of exclusively oxygen and hydrogen. And let us look at these three substances. H2 and O2 are gases at room temperature, while H2O is a liquid at room temperature. Hydrogen is very flammable, while oxygen and H2O are not. All three of these substances have drastically different densities. They also react with widely different sets of molecules. Now let us take the term chemistry one step further and go on to organic chemistry. Organic chemistry is the study of molecules which contain at least one carbon atom. Some references also have the stipulation that each carbon atom has to be bound to at least one hydrogen atom. There are many examples of organic chemistry in our daily world, such as the food we eat, uh, the plastics we consume from, the paper we write on, and the oil we are ever so thirsty for. In this regard, humans and other living beings are also organic beings. We can be labeled more specifically as biochemical systems because well, we are living things. What's the difference between organic chemistry and biochemistry? This difference is 
analogous to the difference between squares and rectangles. I am sure that all of those of you who are watching has heard the term all squares are rectangles but not all rectangles are squares. In a similar regard, all biochemistry is organic chemistry, but not all organic chemistry is biochemistry. This is because the definition of biochemistry is any organic chemistry that happens to be alive. Take that as you will. Until next time, this is your Mr. Security 702, signing out.